So when we don't let that through, when we don't connect to that, when we suppress it with the facts of this world, with this incessant focus on the senses and their data and on what other people have taught us since we've been a little kid, then we suppress the voice of God. Few people have said that the worst failure or suffering in life is unfulfilled potential, a feeling of unfulfilled potential. And I can relate to that. And I think you guys can too. It's one thing, you know, if something doesn't happen that you would like to happen or uh, your body doesn't feel so well, or, you know, you don't have so much money in your bank account, or that's one thing, but the sense that pervasive background sense of unfulfilled potential is what gnaws at the beingness. And it creates this environment, this interior and exterior environment, because as above, so below, that allows for this, what I've called stinky little pond to form. This little cesspool of random mixed frequencies that you are just reflecting and responding and reacting to the stimulus of the senses and effects of people. So it's very important to clear our minds of everything that we think we know, everything that we think we assume is true. This is what I mean by ignore the facts. So how does that work when you have an objective? Let's talk a little bit about having an obje objective, having an intention. Everything starts with that. And the way to really practice this material is to have an objective. You could also just zoom out. You could just relax, be in receptive mode, and just allow your life to more and more breathe life, new life into you. And definitely that's an approach you can take. But if we want to practice the nuances of this, it really helps to have an objective that's more tangible, just for the sake of practice, if, if anything. The practice of deliberately creating. Because in this symbol of having a mission or having an objective, having an intention, in reference to this symbol, in relationship to this symbol, you're going to get to know yourself much deeper and you're going to master your attention much better, your focus. So it does help to have an objective. So I want to ask you guys to tune into an objective that excites you. And I want you to make it something that feels as closely connected to your soul's blueprint as you currently have access to perceiving. So don't just, you can also practice it with, okay, I want a shit ton of strawberry ice cream while I'm in an area that doesn't sell that. You could make it something like that and you could still practice. And sometimes that's easier actually to practice in that way because you don't have any charge around it. There's no unfulfilled potential if it doesn't happen. But if you can, and if you're ready for it, choose something, aim a little higher, shall we say, where you connect to why you are actually here and you dig up those dreams that you had as a kid or as a teenager or as an early adult, young adult. Basically, what I'm suggesting here is you have a dream that you're not even fully aware of because you've suppressed it with facts. You started to assume, unconsciously for the most part, consciously, partially, you started to assume as you made your way through these physical senses and you forgot about your interior dimension of infinite potential and creative power. When you forgot that the universe is working on your behalf, not the other way around, you started to assume the facts of this world. You came here to create, but as you came here and you forgot and you knew you would, you started to assume the form of what was already created which limits your sense of expansion. Your sense of purpose is diminished because you're not breathing new life into this world as you knew you came here to do, to explore. Does this make sense, first of all? Yeah. Okay. So we are here to create, we are not here to consume. Consuming just isn't that pleasant anyway because it's not representative of why you came here. Creating, however, is very satisfying, isn't it? And we do it, we've isolated in little hobbies, little compartments. Oh, I'm a painter, so I create when I paint. 
or I'm a singer, so I create when I sing, or I'm a dancer, so I create when I dance, or I'm a, I'm a tech nut, so I create when I build websites. But you see, those are just tiny, tiny little aspects. Every moment you are creating your entire reality, including your body, including your mind, including your, the house you're in right now, the feelings you have, the dreams you allow. And for most of us, we have automatically, randomly begun to suppress our true desire, which in turn bred false desires confused desires, which could call them cravings or temporary lack-based wants and anxieties and so forth. Those are not desires. Desire, again, when tuned into with no restrictions, with no limiting beliefs, feels like absolute bliss. It feels like God itself is expanding in the way that it wants to expand as a universality to it. It's not personal. Your true desires are not personal to you. They're unique to you, but they're not personal. They are actually God's initiative. So when we don't let that through, when we don't connect to that, when we suppress it with the facts of this world, with this incessant focus on the senses and their data and on what other people have taught us since we've been a little kid, then we suppress the voice of God. Your desire is God's voice. God's desire is your desire. If God doesn't desire it, you won't feel it like a blissful, ecstatic desire within you. It's impossible. Any desire you can conjure up that doesn't feel completely blissful is not God's desire. It's the result of you constricting yourself from God's desire. Any desire that was true that you disallowed through your beliefs turned into a stinky little pond. True desire is God's desire. So if you want to know God's will, dig deep into your soul and ask yourself what you want the most. And that's God's will. For God is man. And man is God. There are no two. There are no two beings. And you know it's true when you feel it, because when you really feel that unrestricted desire, Desire not held back by any thoughts about the world or facts or assumptions. Desire not held back feels like God. Feels like bliss, Satchitananda. Existence, consciousness, bliss. So first things first, in a way, and you may not get this right away, you may not get it fully right away, but then at least you have some glimpse of it so you can start to work with it. And as you start to work with it, you'll start to get it all the way. But at least gain an initial sense of this little superhero adoring eight-year-old version of you that knew everything was possible at some level that wanted to be this or that, that wanted to be a bird, that wanted to be a lion, that wanted to be a superhero. You know, it's just one way to access it. But what are the dreams that if you dared to dream big, if you dare to dream with no limitations, if you dare to dream as God dreams, the greedy motherfucker, then what would you desire? And this is the paradox, you gotta be greedy to come back to a selfless state of desire. And the world will try to persuade you not to. But you got to fight that impulse. You got to go for it. You've got to dig deep and be bold. God favors the bold because they give voice to his voice. They are one with his will, with his desire. So God will provide you with all the resources and they are infinite and they are intelligent beyond belief. As soon as you bump up your boldness. 
which humans will interpret as selfishness. But it's not. And you'll notice, you'll notice when you grant yourself permission to be utterly selfish for a moment, and you get in tune with that true desire and you don't restrict it for just a moment with limiting beliefs, you just allow the desire to be just a desire. Don't put any obstacles in the way like, oh, how or when or with whom or with what means, none of that before you put the veil and the facts, facts of the world over your desire. If you're just selfish for a moment and you think as big as you can, what are you here to fulfill? What are you here to be? to create, to become. And when you feel it, you'll feel self-transcendent. That's the paradox. But the gateway to that for a lot of people is a moment of selfish boldness where they dare to dream and feel back into what they want. What do you want? Not what is appropriate, not what is normal, not what is considered possible. What in a vacuum, what would you want to produce? If there was only a vacuum, a void, meaning there are no things, there are no rules, there are no laws, there are no obstacles, there are no conditionings, there are no limitations in a void. There's nothing there. Out of nothing is what would you like to create? What do you desire? You got to dig deep because you think, oh, it's this. But then does it feel like ecstasy just yet? If not just yet, you will find you've placed a veil of fact still over it. And you'll find subtler and subtler assumptions about what's real, what's not real, what's possible, what's not possible, what's appropriate, what's not appropriate. And as you notice those barriers, you let them go and you dream even bigger, dream even bolder. If everything was possible, what would you want to create? What is the story? What is the expression you want to give to infinite possibilities to the infinite creator? What would you like to demonstrate to the world on behalf of the one infinite creator? What would you like people to see when they see you in the ultimate sense? What do you want? What do you want? We persistently think too small, too little of ourselves. So don't. Okay. Fuck your conditioning. It's another way of saying make love too. You're a superhero. You're not a human being. You're a superhero who is dreaming that he or she is a human being. And you've been dreaming it for so long, you kind of start to believe that you're Clark Kent. And it seems like you can't fly anymore. You have to wear those glasses. No offense to anyone with glasses. It's perfectly fine. You stumble and you fall and you stutter and you're insecure. Meanwhile, you're a god. You're a goddess. Just mistaken identity. It's okay to play the role. It's okay to be able to play Clark Kent and stumble and stutter for certain purposes. But don't believe in it. Don't believe in the role that you're playing here, that you're dreaming. Regrasp the superhero nature of yourself. And from that, you'll get a vision or a sense. And you reconnect to that desire. Again, the creator in you does not think small. It is, it's not fun. So when I say it's precious to have this limitation, I don't mean like, you know, you, you came here just for the chocolate or you came here just to experience suffering or you came here just to start a little family. 
which are all beautiful things, and they contain the entirety of creation. You can see God in all of that. But at the same time, God did not come here to slow down. God came here to speed up. And as Abraham says, trust us. We know you're afraid of it sometimes prior to doing it. But you'll love going 100 miles an hour much more than you love going five miles an hour. Oh, but no. Trust us. You love going 100 miles an hour. It's way more fun than going five miles an hour. Trust us. You love it. Faith. Have faith. You love going fast. Yeah, but I won't have control. You won't want control. You'll feel more in control than you ever have. Going 100 miles an hour, you'll feel much more in control. So it's like that with your life. You'll be, you'll be so much more in control. It's hard to describe, but you'll be completely in control. In fact, it's okay that you desire control in your current state because actually what you want is control, but you're just not going to get it in the way that you think you're going to get it. You're not getting it by managing your circumstances, by avoiding your bigness, by hiding your true identity. You're not going to get it through there. You're going to be in control when you re-embrace the superhero, when you let the phoenix come out. Then you'll be in control. Then the universe will work on, work on your behalf. Then you'll feel safe. You'll feel much safer going 100 miles an hour than you do going five. You really do. And I know you guys have had glimpses of this. You're just fucking in tune. You're just flowing. It's going fast. And it's coming. And it's coming and it's coming and you're building this momentum. And for some reason, you feel completely in control. The creator wants to speed up. That's why it created earth. Literally, it's not symbolically. God created earth because it wants to speed up and expand.